from the future. Subscribe to me if you want to live. This is absolutely not what I agreed to with going out in the field. Check this out. Take a look at this. I got the receipts, because you all know I follow the money. And I got the laptop. It was me. You have no idea what I went through to find that. Dude, we all know what you go through to get this stuff. It's fine. It's totally fine. Okay, just calm down. You don't even know about the adrenaline. <laughs> Fixing the border, or we can fix it. Dude, f you. You should have fixed Climate it. Climate change is having Three a years disproportionate ago. effect on the physical and mental health of black communities. You would fool me, Todd, man. My sister Brianna is carrying both our twins. You just say your sister is carrying your twins? Just stop. Just keep your legs together, man. Fuck. This is a hate crime. This video is a hate crime. Don't trust the government. Never put yourself on a list. And if those godless commies want the smoke. Wolverines! What is up, everybody? Welcome to the ThoughtCast. I'm your host, Jeff D. Please, if you don't mind, leave a like, follow. We are this close to getting 200 followers over here on Rumble. I have 20,000 over on YouTube. Welcome all my free thinkers over there. Uh, this is going to be maybe one of the most action-packed ThoughtCasts I have so far. I have like four pages of links to go through with you guys. I don't even think it's possible to actually do it, but we're going to try. I see in the chat, we got uh, a whole bunch of the McGroins in. You guys are hilarious. I love, love it every single time. Uh, make sure to check out and raid them uh, when the stream is over. And one of the McGroins, if you don't mind, uh, drop in the comments for this video the link to your chat room so the people who see it can go visit, say hi to the McGroins, and you might see me in there on the ad occasion too because I do go and chat with those guys. They're awesome. Salty says we need to get those screw tubers on Rumble. Yeah, everyone who wants to come over to Rumble, please do. Please do because I never know when I'll be uh, kicked out. But I have a 100 plus times the following over on YouTube as I do on rumble. And I've been putting content over here for just as long. So <laughs> I, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm, it's not a, it's not just by lack of trying. I assure you. All right. So let's, let's get to it. I got my tech sorted out a little bit better. So hopefully we can move through things a little bit quicker. And I, I'd like to do that. Okay, there we go. We got the main cam. Let's go to first and foremost. This just got put out by Elon Musk. And I got to tell you guys, this is not something to snooze at. Traffic on X, formerly known as Twitter, reaches all time high. Now, I don't exactly know how it's measured, but they don't overly bullshit with these kind of numbers. Dude has Asperger's. You get what I'm saying? SJW says intro volume was perfect. Great. I did turn it down a bit to try and get it in that range. Uh, so I'm glad <laughs> I'm a big audio dork. So if the audio is jacked, it pisses me off 
I go to great lengths to try and uh, make that good for you guys. All right. Well, anyway, here's the deal. X is the new hotness. And if you don't like that, I am so sorry, but it just is. The engagement level there is incredible. And one of the things that we're seeing is the media cannot get away with shit because what they like to do is they like to build narratives, make a plan, and then execute it with all of their garbage articles, the, the horrible rigged interviews, and then the media talking heads. But on X, everything moves so damn fast, they can't get ahead of the truthers and the independent media people we're sharing stuff. So if you're not on Twitter, you should get on Twitter. You should. And you should follow me while you're on there. Just saying. I'll make an make a note, Jeff. Create a cool animation for your Twitter so people follow you. But all my links are uh, listed below on every one of my videos. So if you want to follow me, check out the Discord, check out Twitter, whatever. All that stuff is there. But this is huge. Twitter is the mainstream before it used to be like Twitter isn't real life. Cause it was like an arm of the CIA feds, you know, whatever. Uh, but now it's like taken on a life of its own and the information is moving really, really damn fast. That's all I'm trying to say, but it's really important in my opinion. All right. To the next, we got this Biden quote. He's been using this for years. No. Nope. It's old, it's tired, it's not true, but he keeps saying it. No one in America will pay a single penny more in federal taxes if they make under less, they make less than $400,000 a year. I wish I was able to do that. I was listed, and Bernie will used to kid me about it, I was listed as the poorest man in Congress for 36 years. I didn't think I was poor, I got a good salary, but it was the poorest man in Congress. No one. Okay. Joey, the big guy, the big guy is saying, you know, he, he you know, it's so bad. He, he's just crossed the threshold now, but he used to be the poorest guy in, co in Congress. We, yeah. We're all like really crying for you, bro. Seriously. I can't freaking handle these people, but that was a lie. Like everybody's taxes went up. I saw a statistic. It was like people all the way down to $20,000 in income had a tax rate increase with Biden. Like that just didn't happen. It just absolutely did not happen, period. And that's not even going into the whole inflation debacle. And the th thing is, at this point, all he can do really is repeat those old tired lines that are not true over and over again because the yeah, guy is got he's got like spaghetti brains okay yeah. i got I'm trying yeah. to crack this open up here as we, here, here as open. We get all right let me open it as a separate do i have that open somewhere already hang on guys hang on here as we get set for got it all right yeah, you got to see this, uh, this lady talk about how she had a completely scripted conversation with Biden. Like, this is embarrassing, but this is what is showing up in everyone's feeds. That this guy doesn't have the juice. And if you want to say that he's got four years after November, like after January 25th or whatever, there ain't no way. Like, look at this. Here as we get set for a wonderful day I'm in sports. Opening day for America's national pastime. This was about two months after he took office. Um, that was an interesting experience in its own right because it was so structured and I was told, you will say every word that we write out. You will not deviate from the script and go. To the word, like, Every single question was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Absolutely. I was on script and was told not to deviate because it was very much, this is what you will ask. This is how you will say it. Um, no follow-ups. No follow-ups. Next. I knew that this was a lot bigger than just the wonderful editors that I worked with. This went up to 
the fourth floor, as we said, <laughs> that we're all the the bosses, the top executives, the decision makers are the president where, of our company, the CEO, where, where they all work. That is her explaining what happened just after he took office. Just after. Four years have gone by, and you see he, he's falling apart. And it's not a little bit. So you see they have the, the projection that won't stop. Can't stop with the projection. And I won't stop exposing the projection. So we got Joe Biden saying Donald Trump won't do what American president must do. What an American president must do. He refuses to denounce political violence. When has that been the case? I'll say what Trump won't. Political violence is never, ever acceptable in America. And then the big slogan, you can't be pro-insurrection and pro-America. Listen, buddy, a couple things. For one... America was founded on insurrection. It was founded on rebelling against the current government structure. Like that's what we are. Okay. The, the red coats came for the guns and we stacked bodies in Lexington and Concord. That's what happened. Okay. And here you go. There's me on Twitter to uh, the POTUS. Nice projection. We see your admin stole the 2020 election and crushed dissent. Alec Baldwin killed more people than all the January 6th insurrectionists combined. He was better armed too. GTF OH. You guys know uh you guys know what that means. That's what they're they're trying to push. They're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to act like we didn't see all that footage. Like we don't know what the game is that's going on here. like feels like the okay this was Jill Biden she is informed that Trump is dominating Biden in the polls feels like the Wall Street Journal one land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states then. no he's not losing in all the battleground oh, but states. he's coming up and he's um, even or doing better so mm. you know what once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, mm -hmm. it's obvious that Joe will win this election. All right. So she just straight up cut him off. Just straight up, straight up cuts him off. And what? She's like, no, 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 no. He's not losing. He's he's coming up. Well, that's losing. If if you're coming up, that means you're behind. That means you're losing. They're saying he's not going to lose. I feel like he's going to do better. But it's like, no, 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 he's not losing all the bad. He is. He is losing all of them, period. That's happening. All the polls say he's losing. Now, are the polls accurate? Usually no, because they're like always in favor, heavily in favor of the Democrats. And I mean, you guys can let me know what, what reasons there are. I think it's because... Honestly, a lot of conservative slash Republican people have lives and shit to do. So they don't sit there and answer all these stupid questions in the polls. So then you end up with uh, just like the libs who feel like, oh, I'm going to change the world by, you know, answering all these social justice forced questions to make it seem like there's more of me than there actually are. I could be wrong there, but that's just what I feel. That's just how I feel about it. Really don't like spending time on those. All right. And wokeness says Joe Biden drained our strategic petroleum reserve down to 17 days of supply. That's kind of like dangerous considering world war three is on the brink. And when you see the artificial improvement in the gas prices, that was from Joe Biden draining the strategic oil reserves that Trump filled up. So you could thank Trump because he had enough of a reserve that Joe was able to use it instead of for war to make it seem like his economy was better than it actually was. What a freaking upstanding citizen. And so now 
he canceled the refill order because the shit was too expensive because it's, it's not a good time to reorder. So we have no reserves. If there is a situation and we get cut off and we have war, et cetera, we're, we're pretty screwed right now because they played politics with our doomsday storage of fuel, of energy. Pretty freaking terrible, dude. That's not, that's just no bueno. And people see it. People are seeing it. That's a good part. That's absolutely the good part. And here's a part that I like to share. But do you really Not everyone loves this guy. But this is uh, RFK Jr. when he talks about the difference between Trump and Biden. But do you really believe that when people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is, is it an equal... Yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden. I, I mean, listen. I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy, and the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the federal court of appeals, and now before the Supreme Court. It shows that he started censoring not just me. 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first first president in history, to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents. For political reasons, he's weaponizing the federal agencies. Those are really critical threats Donald to democracy. Trump, of course. I love how she has to intro, intro excuse me. She has to interrupt him and say, but Donald Trump, of course, and then go into whatever Trump did. Like, what did Trump do, though? I don't even care what she said Trump did because he probably didn't. It probably was another thing he didn't do, but they're trying to label it as such. But I love RFK Jr. for the red pills, for the crapping on Biden, for the crapping on Big Pharma, for the crapping on the intelligence communities. And I will never, ever, ever vote for him. Doesn't matter. You don't have to vote for the guy to agree with some of the stuff that he says. And in this instance, the stuff that he says is massively damaging to Joe Biden. And rightfully so. If Joe Biden censored him directly, if Joe Biden denied him Secret Service protection when he is has a family history of getting capped due to politics... That's messed up. How is Nikki Haley getting Secret Service protection, but RFK Jr. doesn't? Nikki lost every place, everywhere, not even, I mean, she won Vermont, but it was like every, it's a pure blue state. And it was all the anti-Trumper Democrats that were crossover voters for Nikki Haley. It, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about, dude. It's just not a thing. So appreciate RFK Jr. for that, uh, never voting for him, but still, that's good. All right, let's, uh, let's laugh a bit. It's been kind of serious here. Now, Armando shared this. For those of you who do not know Armando, Armando is from Pew Pew Nation TV. I've had him co-host on a whole bunch of uh, videos with me. And he's a four tour combat vet and a survivor of communist Cuba. Pretty awesome guy. I'll get him on one of these shows one of these times. But he shared to us a Babylon B skit, which said uh, Californians move to Texas. So I, we got to see this. I feel like it's going to be hilarious. Honey, someone's going to the house. Someone's going to the house. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? 
I'm going to call the cops. I'm going to call the cops. Uh, we're recording you. No, 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 no. It's okay. I, I, I'm just your neighbor coming by to say howdy. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, we're not used to people stopping by to say howdy without assaulting us first, robbing us, or defecating on our lawn. <laughs> and they're wearing masks in, in their own house. Dude. Sometimes all three. <laughs> the trifecta. We're from Los Angeles. Just moved to Texas. I figured. Oh, the California plates? Oh, yeah, the masks. Inside your own house. <laughs> no one else around. 2022. <laughs> we just want to be extra safe. We feel naked without masks. We'll probably wear them for the rest of our lives. We'll be buried in them. Okay. Well, oh man, you seem like a lovely couple. That was cringy two years ago. Now it's like just Taylor Lorenz and a bunch of half retarded nitwits. Like I said, I just wanted to drop by and welcome you to the neighborhood. Why do you want something? Oh, no, 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 no. They're, uh, I think he's being friendly. People around here are friendly. Bro. Like we've seen in the movies, right? I thought that was just make believe like superheroes or families that go to church. No, no, no. That's a myth. This is real life. Oh. So, uh, I live in that house over yonder. The name's Kevin. Hi, Kevin. I'm Timpani. She, her. And I'm Steve. He, him. What are your pronouns? I don't believe in pronouns. I think they're reductive. In fact, just your asking about it is a microaggression. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I, I didn't mean to. No, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I like all pronouns. My favorite is you. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. Exactly. So, if you need anything, just holler. My wife and I'd be happy to help. Baby, he has a gun. Oh, I'm calling the cops. I'm recording you. No, no, no. no. Recording it's you. okay. It's okay. It's just my sidearm. Everybody here has a gun. <laughs> it's like everybody here has a gun. And he's got the open carry on the outside. And he's a lefty. <sighs> Sorry. We don't really like guns. Mm. There's a lot of crime where we're from. Yeah. I understand. There's not a lot of crime here. Why? Because everybody here has a gun. I literally just had this conversation with my grandma who's visiting from New York because I, she was talking about the guns and I was just like, yeah, I got, got to be honest with you. Like the difference here is like all the good guys have guns. So people don't mess around because if you got a, like a couple of old ladies and a couple of retired military and a couple of just armed civilians all in one spot, the bad people don't know who's armed and they're kind of just scared shitless all the time because there's so much extra risk involved in acting incorrectly. Now, big question in the chat. Let me know. Do you think he's actually a lefty or do you think that they just gave him a left-handed uh, holster because that was the positioning in that house because the cameraman had to be off to that side to get the shot of the gun? Come on. We're filmmakers out here. Amateur skit, skit artists. So... If he was uh, holstered on the right side, you wouldn't see it in the shot. There's no angle that they could stand. There's a wall over there. Come on. These are the important details. I don't get it. It doesn't add up at all. You'll get used to it. But what if I don't want to get used to it? Big. Guns? People walking up to your driveway without masks and, and without pronouns? I, I don't think I can live like this. Well, if it makes you feel more at home, we just recently replaced a lot of our electrical grid with unreliable wind power baby it helps but honestly i just don't think i can do this where's the police sirens where's the helicopters overhead where's the needles in the street i just can't live like this it's so hot and the bugs are so big wow I love how they finished out with the, we just replaced a bunch of our grid with unreliable wind. Yeah. Did you see the Texas got freaking wrecked by a hailstorm and they had like acres and miles of uh, solar panels get destroyed by hail. God was like, uh, no drill for oil idiots.
Dagnar, love this. Us left-handed people are in our right minds. Yeah, I write left-handed and shoot better layups left-handed, and I shot pool left-handed, but otherwise more right-handed. So I'm kind of ambidextrous, but I did have a sh one of those shirts, right? The right minds shirts. All right, that was fun. All right, into the serious stuff. I know you guys saw this guy, probably more of this guy than you wanted to see. Freeloading migrant influencer mocking the U.S. taxpayers who work like slaves while waving cash in his latest videos. So he's got the gun. He's an illegal immigrant. He was able to carry guns because of the laws. He has wads of cash because they were just giving them money. And I'm, I'm just, I'm going to keep it real with you. This is pissing people off. And... Well, I'll just tell you in a minute. But here's him. Is this the same guy? No, wait, wait. Yeah, same guy. So this is from the Daily Caller. And it's showing the influencer who advised illegal migrants to steal homes is on the run from immigration authorities. So we all saw that clip. I, I've used it a whole bunch of times. Um, but it's saying that... After all that he was doing, mocking them, apparently he's actually <laughs> getting tracked down, uh, rightfully so. So I saw another video where he was crying like a bitch, and that was that warmed my heart quite a bit, I'm not going to lie. All right, but here's the problem, though. Thousands of migrants set to arrive in massive El Paso-bound caravan in just a few days. Now, this was, what, a couple of days ago, so they should be here any moment. So this, this is not ending. This problem, this migration, the illegal migration problem, is not coming to an end anytime soon. So what is happening is... Trump is taking a decisive stance against the illegal migration. That's like what he's running on, and people appreciate that. People are on the Trump train. I got told that uh, some people that I know from up in New York, younger generation, minorities, are done. They're just like, hey, you know what? I can't afford shit. Like, there was no war. There was there was good cost of everything. There was good supply of everything. There wasn't this crazy crime and we weren't giving stacks of cash, free phones and five star or four star accommodation to illegal migrants who are laughing in our faces for working for a living. That's my younger, younger minority groups in New York are starting to come around and say these things because they see it. They see it physically right in their face every day it impacts them so you can't gaslight them out of this you just can't and trump obviously got hit with that whole bloodbath hoax that the media was trying to push when he was talking about the cars in china china opening the plant um the plant in mexico so here's from forbes joe biden's border bloodbath Trump doubles down on controversial anti-immigration rhetoric. So it's saying Trump says some of his darkest anti-immigration rhetoric on Tuesday in Michigan. And he says we've been wrecked by Biden's border policies and promised mass deportation of illegals day one if he's reelected. And they keep using the bloodbath thing and, and trying to just... Like Trump's use of bloodbath last month while describing his predictions for the auto industry under Biden's second Drew term drew heavy criticism and concerns that he was alluding to political violence. A Trump, a term Trump called Tuesday was incorrectly used against him, adding that all his political adversaries do is cheat on elections and disinformation, misinformation. So it shows his speech Tuesday coincided with the national report the Republican National Committee's launch of a website titled Biden Bloodbath dedicated to attacking Biden's border policies. That is insane. And yeah, they're saying 
He's reprised his term animals when discussing migrants entering the country illegally who've been accused of crimes and claimed illegal immigration has wrecked our country. So we got them admitting the one part was a hoax, them taking it in the face that he is now pushing the label that they used for him, the bloodbath label, and then applying it to something that Biden is responsible for, the border crisis. And then also they snuck in there him t calling them animals. So now that's going to be a new freaking thing. The media trying to spin him calling the psychos committing atrocities on our people uh, animals, which they are. They're feral. They're like less than human. Yeah. If you, if you eat people and sex traffic people and sell fentanyl to people and you attack just innocent people who are doing nothing. You you can be called an, a feral animal that should be put down. I think that's absolutely fair uh, for anyone who's not stupid. That's just the reality. And so here's Trump on the border himself. More American life should be lost to migrant crime. When I'm president of the United States, we will demand justice for Lakin. On day one, my administration will terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration. We will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, larger than that by far of Dwight Eisenhower. You know, Eisenhower had a similar problem, but peanuts by comparison. It's like the border. I did a great job on the border. The border was terrible, but it was peanuts by comparison to what it is now. It was like a little tiny a small percentage now i mean nobody's ever had to go through this nobody ever not one and then you see in the comments the like butthurt lefties saying did you know that donald trump is more likely to commit a crime than an immigrant what about an illegal immigrant they already committed a crime they came here illegally go to the port of entry period there is no discussion zero discussion they should have alligators Alligator moats, laser wires, I mean, landmines with signage that, it, that tells people there's landmines. And then a big arrow that says port of point of entry that way. Go to the point of entry. Don't come through here because there's alligator moats and space lasers and landmines. Go that way to the point of entry. That's it. Like it's not, I, I'm there. I'm sorry. Go to every other country in the freaking world and look at their immigration policy. Liberals can get bent. Nobody is even close to as lenient as we are. Nobody. And we say, go to the point of entry. We can process you. We can get you into the steps towards legal immigration. And if you are one of these crazy people, one of these career criminal people, one of the, the psych wards that got emptied or the prisons that got emptied, the MS-13 gangs, the, the cartel, we're just going to, we're going to say, no, you can't come because you're the scum of the earth criminal people that we don't want in our country and we shouldn't let them in. That's not controversial. There's absolutely nothing controversial about any of this. And they try to make it seem like it is. That's the crime. That's the crime here. Okay, it's fine. Chilling. Chilling. All right, so here is on MSNBC. Candace Owens shared this. But yet... I'm going to skip through some of it, but we'll read it first. She said, as the left is now describing Christ as king as something dangerous, and it is very important to remember that the war on Christ was not started by the left. This was started by Andrew Clavin, Clavin, yeah, of the Daily Wire in an attempt to explain how I was anti-Semitic. Okay, and let's get into, like, here. Disturbing than that venom and hatred on Easter Sunday itself was the buildup of Holy Week. It featured Trump sharing posts where he compared himself in calling a post where a supporter compared him to Jesus in the trials he faces in court in New York to the trials Jesus faced is a beautiful post. He's selling Bibles. And then 
You know, the sad thing is this isn't just confined to Trump anymore. We used to be able to say or used to try to comfort ourselves by saying, well, Donald Trump is the bad guy. And then there's just so many good people who are fooled. And there are still good people who are fooled by him. But it's become increasingly clear that Trumpism and that Trump ethic is really leaking into American Christianity itself. As we saw when in, during Holy Week, Christians all over Twitter were posting Christ is King specifically aimed at Jewish Americans, specifically aimed to assert religious dominance in a very gross and ugly way. And we're seeing this just leak out, Mika, and it is very distressing. But even more than that, it is very dangerous. Oh, man, it hurts, man. It really hurts to listen to this kind of stuff. They're like, it's really dangerous for them to say Christ is king. It's aimed at Jewish people to, to spew venom and hatred and ensure dominance in their religion. Listen, I mean, you can say whatever you want, okay? I'm not like a good Christian. I've said this a million times. I'll continue to say it. I'm not. I just am not, okay? I don't follow all the rules. I wasn't raised in church, all that. But here's the thing. Here's the deal. Of all the law and prophets, they're all dead, okay? Prophets all died in all these religions. It's like the guy, they're like, oh, this holy guy, and he died. Okay. Jesus, the one, one guy conquered death, ascended to heaven. Christ is king. So I, I like, I'm sorry. You, you can't, you can't compete with that. You cannot. It's in history. You can look through the history. There's more proof that that happened than any other ancient history that we believe as fact. So whatever, like stay mad. On the Trump thing, they're like, Trump's a bad guy, period, as an overarching thing. And there's other people who are okay people, but they're fooled by Trump. So we can forgive them. It's like, fuck you, dude. I'm so sick of that. Like this from the M MSNBC type people, they create this division that we have because they paint the Trump supporter people as okay people who are stupid and they've been fooled by Trump. But we, the intellectual liberals on this side with our college degrees, et cetera, we're the smart people. Hey, I got a new subscription on YouTube. Thank you. I have alerts set up here. Believe it or not, I got that figured out. Um, so that's the thing is it's really annoying. It's really annoying that you have the people who are wrong about everything all the time, thinking that they're intellectually and morally superior to the, you know, salt of the earth, Trump supporter type people. And I'm going to be real. I supported Trump in 2015 for the 2016. I supported him in 2020. I'm supporting him now more than ever. So having these kind of people come on here and just be like, we're stupid, but maybe forgivable. It's like we're, we're forgivable in our ignorance in supporting Donald Trump. Like I just, it's infuriating. It's infuriating, but I got a stinger for you guys. Cause this is, this is how we feel. And I will feel this way all day, every day. For Donald Trump support. I ain't never gonna pretend that I give a damn. Anybody who's offended can get it, we throwing hands. Anybody not trying to make America great again. You a pawn, you a clown, better know where I stand. It's short and sweet, but that's all we need, okay? You're not trying to make America great again. You're a pawn, you're a clown. Now you know where I stand. Boom. In the face. <clears throat> you know what? Let's take a, a mini break. Freedom Freight. We got a package for Jeff B. Freedom Freight. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, the package is secured.
Ah. All right. Well, we got this. New in the mail. But, I'll be honest, I'm being a little bit deceptive with you guys. I actually designed this. This is... My freedom merchandise. Let's see. I hope it's I hope it's nice. It's pretty good. I think that the glow doesn't translate to the to the fabric quite as well. So I might change that. But I got my Free Thinkers for Trump shirt. That's what's up. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about that. I'll be wearing that one later. So Trump 2024. Discount 10% off on the merchandise. All discount or all uh, links in the description below. But that's pretty cool. Gave you a little cloud cam too. There you go. All right. All right. Where is this? So I was telling you, this is another issue. Is they're trying with these hoaxes. They're always trying this bullshit <laughs> And I'm just glad that people are calling it out. They're going on the networks and calling it out. And then it's getting shared quickly, these sound bites. So even if they try to spin it, it doesn't matter. The sound bite where they get their ass chewed out on the, on the main air is getting shared with way, way more frequency, way more clicks, way more views and way more breakdowns than the spin that they're trying to do on the other end on those programs. Cause nobody watches them. Nobody watches MSNBC and CNN on their TV, except for like some of my relatives in New York and here. It's a very, very small percentage of the super, super brainwashed liberals. They do exist. There are some of them, but it's not that many anymore. All right. Look at this. But when he says these are, these immigrants are animals, they're not humans, what does that su suggest? I mean, isn't that brutal? Shouldn't people be condemning that? No. I listened to the entire tape. He was specifically talking about the person who murdered Lakin Riley in Georgia. And to be honest with you, Wolf, if somebody murders another human being, I think they deserve to be called animals. And I don't think any American uh, is really going to reject that kind of rhetoric. That poor girl was murdered in cold blood. Is that person who did it not an animal? I think that's an apt term. So you think he was only referring to those murderers, not referring in general to illegal immigrants who are coming into the United States? I listened to the tape. That's exactly what he was talking about, in my opinion. But when he said it twice. You heard it. He said it twice. I listened to the whole tape. What he said was, so he prefaced it with, you didn't pay attention to the whole thing. You are spinning. You are creating a narrative. I listened to the whole thing. Like back in the day, I listened to the full Brad Raffensperger phone call that Trump had. It was like 53 minutes long. And then later that day, I saw the media spin it and share like seconds of it and then try and paint Trump as trying to steal the election in Georgia. And then I had my liberal nitwit peers posting, I don't know how anyone could be a Trump supporter after that phone call. And I'm like, I listened to the whole damn phone call. He didn't say anything wrong. You watched the 13 second clip on CNN and then you judge me with no information. Like you have no information. Your head is so far up your ass that the mask is probably actually working to filter some of the shit. All right. I'm being mean now. I gotta, I gotta calm down. Uh, goose fraba, goose fraba. We're good. We're good. We're back. All right. Where's this one? This is particularly nasty. Perfect. That's next. Cued something up for you. All right. Look at this. This is brutal. We'll go Twitter so you can see it better. There you go. Um, 
New York Post. New York City subway menace with box cutter attacks woman before turning weapon on Good Samaritan. Okay, for one, he doesn't look like a corn-fred Nebraskan American. Looks like that guy may be from somewhere else. Okay. Looks like he could could be my cousin, honestly. But New York, New York has not been good in a while. And you know what? We sent our field correspondent, Jeff D, business Jeff, uh, kind of accidentally to hell, but you'll see. This is absolutely not what I agreed to with going out in the field. But yes, here in hell, very similar to New York, uh, with the exception of much better criminal justice and I don't need a shovel to get out of the driveway. Back to you, Jeff. I love when I can use that against New York. <laughs> oh, that place is so screwed. This is the reality. Okay, but it's getting better, guys. It's definitely getting better. I'm looking at how much time we have. Gen X really like tan for being in hell. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So here's what happened in Grand Rapids. Today, on behalf of 12,000 law enforcement people that the Police Officers Association of Michigan represent, we want you to accept our endorsement for President of the United States. Good job, Trump. So he gets the endorsement from Grand Rapids, from the Michigan Police Association or whatever. Okay, listen to the left-wing response. These are these are the people. There's a few of them left. But, like, imagine you don't know anything that's going on at all. And then you see that. This is the response if you're a fully, completely unhinged left winger. All right. You've been prefaced enough. Are you kidding me, law enforcement? Are you kidding me? Tonight in Grand Rapids, multiple law enforcement officers stood behind Donald Trump as he spoke. People that are elected officials like sheriffs, others hired to protect and enforce the law for the entire citizenry, not for a political party, explicitly forbidden from being a partisan authoritarian police force standing on stage, entirely unethical, probably illegal, on top of which Donald Trump has been indicted 91 times. He's liable for sexual assault. His entire business was found to be fraudulent. And law enforcement has the fucking gall to stand on stage with him. Enough is enough. Are you I suddenly feel like really calm. I don't know how you guys are. But see, the, the biggest worry for me is like someone like that, how, how damaged do you think his heart is? Like how many shots in do you think that guy is? And then he acts like that. There's no way that you can keep up that kind of strain on your, uh, your damaged vessel. I don't see it. That's, that's pretty tough. But when you look at who they're listening to, you got stuff like this. This is even a hard choice. I don't, I don't understand why this is even a hard choice, really. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. But we have to go through the election, and hopefully people will realize what's at stake because it's an existential uh, question. I, what kind of country we're going to have, what kind of democracy we're going to have. And people who blow that off are not paying attention. I don't, I oh, man. Yeah, so, so that's what I mean. You have somebody like that fueling the person who's acting like a crazy person, right? <laughs> like that's where all that comes from. I got the Diddy stuff. I got that stuff, man. That's going to be into the next show. I'll show this. Cause this is, this is just funny. I want to show you this funny thing. I'm going to quit the internet. If we can't agree on one thing. 
Alex Jones is a founding father. Not like of the country, but of all the important information of like the last 30 years. He's a conspiracy daddy and we're all letting him down by not calling him a founding father. He's a conspiracy daddy. Dude, I, I have five kids. I feel like I need to make a conspiracy daddy shirt. Like that would be such a cool thing. I also need to lose a little bit of weight. I'm chunking out a little bit. So. But I, I think it's optional with the conspiracy daddy shirt. It just doesn't matter. So. Let me know. What should that look like? Conspiracy daddy. Just like a dad with some kids. Tinfoil hat. I don't know. I don't know, but it's funny. The whole thing was hilarious. And yeah, Alex is the one that shared that too. That's the funniest part. <laughs> it's like he shared that. He's like, this will trip. This will trigger the thought police big time. <laughs> oh, that guy. I mean, he he was right about the frogs being gay. That's for sure. Can't even can't even go there. All right. I have to show you this. Like I have to. We can't not show you this because this is legitimately terrifying. Where are we going to put these people? The uncomfortable truth, as far as I can see it, is that we are going to have tent cities of asylum seekers popping up around the UK. Well, I think you summed it up beautifully, Patrick, just the huge pressure that we're seeing now on accommodation. And that does seem to be the only answer. But I'm actually a little bit more worried than that because I think... Hold up, Mr. Kraft. 1776 by Playboy the Beast, Jeff D, do that song too. I did it. I, that's the literally the last video I just posted on, on YouTube. We got to pause for a second. We'll come back to this, but this is important. So I don't, for the people who do not know on YouTube, I make the free thinker reaction series because I feel like music is a fantastic way to connect to culture. And I can react to this new stuff that's come out and then I can post on it. Um, I can let people know like, Hey, here's the facts. Here's what's going on with politics, X, Y, Z, et cetera, whatever. And if you got a problem, so I'm not going to, I'll just share the very, very beginning because you guys need to know this stuff. Like you, you need to know this is what I do out here. And if you got a problem with that, you can suck my nuts. Cause it's 2024, <laughs> baby, you know we ride with Trump. Yeah. And if you vote Hold for up. Biden. <laughs> Hold on, we're gonna listen again. So you can look at that. Because that's a video I posted yesterday. And FYI, Playboy the Beast himself responded. I'm gonna pin that comment now so you can see. But he said, hey, brother, appreciate the reaction. Subbed and about to share to my people as well. Respect 100% and love the framed constitution on the wall, by the way. So Playboy the Beast uh, showed a little love for the reaction. So you guys should check it out. I'm just saying for the people who haven't already. All right. Now back to the regularly scheduled programming. Um, this whole thing was about the illegal migrants are taking up an ungodly amount of space in the UK. So what they're trying to do is kick people out of their houses so that they can make space for these illegal aliens. Listen to the, the verbiage, though. It's in, you know, British speak. I think this is all getting very sinister now. We know that we've had people who have been told that their properties are going to be compulsory purchased for asylum seekers. That pretty much tears up private property rights in this country. Um, I was listening to the radio on the way here and they were talking about a massive problem facing Britain, which was older people living in houses that were, quote, too big for them. Who's got a right to tell you your house is too big for you? You should be allowed to live where you darn well like. And the implication was very clear. These elderly people are taking houses that they shouldn't have. And I feel that's a worry, that there'll be some kind of move to get them out of those houses. Um, we've also had the horrible scenario last week when Matthew Paris, writing in The Times, talked about how euthanasia wouldn't be a bad thing if it encouraged elderly people to hasten their own deaths. So what? We've got to... Pop our clogs, have we, forcibly, when we're mm. 60, 70, 80, 90, perhaps earlier, if we're not productive people mm. in society, as Matthew Paris said it. So I, I think the whole thing now is getting really, really sinister and scary. Okay. okay, so the reality is, as a form of population control, they want to, A, 
kill off the elderly population using these maid services, these euthanasia services. And then B, they're saying you need to give up your house for these migrant families because we all know if you've ever seen Mexicans get out of a van, they can fill it up. I have a van. I have five children. There's seven of us in the one van. It's like a clown car when everyone disperses. Okay. I get it. Stereotype, whatever. That's, that's the reality. So they're like, we got these aged Brits with a house and four bedrooms and all their kids left and they got a gym and a study and a great room and whatever. They need to give up their space because they don't need that much space, bro. If you don't have property rights, you have nothing. You have nothing. You don't have privacy. You don't have property. And the reality is as soon as you lose the second amendment, you lose the capacity to keep your rights because you don't have any teeth behind a rebuttal when they try to take your rights. So they're, they're trying to kick old people out of their houses and then get them depressed so they could offer them a way out so that they don't use any more resources. And the more socialist slash communist you get in your political structure, the more likely it is that that shitty, horrible system is going to require that you lower the consumption of resources because the government in charge of the means of production sucks ass at producing. So they have to figure out creative ways to drastically lower the population so the system can continue to work. And in their case, they're trying to kill off the old people and steal their homes so that their system with the unhinged illegal immigration can continue. Scary, terrifying, but that's where we're at. Okay, so I got that, deleting that. I know I had another video. Oh yeah, we gotta, show, we gotta watch this video and then I'll kick you out. This is a good one though. I love the verbiage. We're talking about the normies. Most people don't talk about the normies. I'm a conspiracy daddy. I'm taking it. Sorry, Alex. How many kids does Alex have? I have five. I get to be conspiracy daddy. Uh. Roll the tape. This is a gross... Uh, the, the attack on Trump's constitutional rights to defend himself, the abuse of the law, the legal system uh, on Trump, it's, I, I have to tell you, the, the Democrats, the left, have made a massive bet on all of this lawfare that some of it will take Trump out. I'm making a bet that this lawfare is going to blow up in their face. When things like this really break in on the normies that are watching this, Earth. they're going to realize Earth. the gross abuse of power that the left is actually doing to try and bring down Trump. Because yeah. the orange man bad. The or and anything, anywhere, anytime is acceptable because the orange man bad. Just. The normies woke up over Easter weekend when the White House called it Trans Visibility Day. Yeah. Here, here's the former president yeah. just about an hour ago. Bro, he said the normies. Are you kidding me right now? Who? You don't get to see the normies in these kind of, th in these kind of shows. Like Fox is typically controlled opposition. They show you just enough where you feel informed compared to the liberals, but not enough that you really know exactly what's going on. So you end up with like a really, really rough half truth situation. Uh, well, let's see, where am I at here? Yeah, that's good. Guys, this was uh, going cloud cam for the exit. This was a really good one. I think this was a good show. I had to pack a lot. I still have a lot. So there's going to be more for Friday show already in the queue. Um, but stay frosty question, everything, make sure you watch my other videos and such. I appreciate all the channel members, etc. This shit takes forever and doesn't really pay well, <laughs> but you guys make it happen. So thank you so much. And I'm rolling out.